special edition of the Bill Haston podcast. We, um, Dean and I are in Stillwater, or I'm in Stillwater today for the uh, news conference earlier. It was an unveiling of Oklahoma State's uh, athletics vision plan. Very impressive, very aggressive, massively ambitious. Uh, and Dean has the list of the venues and facilities. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, uh, that were discussed today, and and the renderings were shown today at this. And by now, I'm sure most Oklahoma State people have seen Dean the video, the eight minute video that was posted on YouTube this morning. But if you have the list in front of you. Why don't you recite that right quick, and then we'll get into a discussion on um, uh, on what this all entails. Yes, there's going to be three new buildings uh, on campus, Bill, that, that they're hoping for. And it's a, a new softball stadium on the site of Alley P, um, something that I think is massively, massively interesting. It's called the Human Performance Innovation Complex. And that's going to be a joint project between the university, the academics of the university and, uh, and athletics. Um, it's going to be the new home, kind of operations home for, for OSU football. Um, and then on top of that, uh, an indoor track facility and OSU is the only team in the big only school in the big 12 that does not have an indoor athletics an, an indoor uh, track facility so, so that's interesting and then a couple add-ons to pre-existing buildings um, a new practice facility uh, for, for the men's and women's basketball a new wrestling training facility. Those are going to be on north and south sides of uh, Gallagher Iba. They want a new welcome plaza on the east side of Gallagher Iba, kind of similar to what they have on the west side of, of Boone Pickens. Um, some upgrades to Karsten Creek, and and that's just I didn't know this, Bill, but that that venue, Karsten Creek, that course is twenty nine years old. So just kind of some maintenance, some upkeep. All right. On that. All right. Uh, the equestrian center is going to get, get a new covered arena that, that was in the plan. And then a, uh, once football makes the move from the West end zone out to this human performance, uh, innovation complex, they're going to kind of turn that into a student success center, uh, that they currently have something like that over in Gallagher, Iba. Uh, so, so that's what that's going to look like. And you're going to kind of get your academic, uh, mental health, uh, services. Th those are going to move over to the West end zone is kind of the plan right now. Right. So uh, this was reminiscent for me uh, today of the Boone Pickens uh, news conference, unforgettable Boone Pickens news conference 17 years ago, during which it was announced. And check this out, too, Dean. That morning, I got a call from an OSU source and I was told we, we knew it was going to be a big gift. Right. Uh, so but this guy says, don't be surprised if it's a $50 million donation. And I was like, wow. Uh, okay. So I blogged before I left Tulsa to head over to Stillwater. Right. And I wrote, don't, you know, a, that a source had indicated it could be as much as fifth as a $50 million donation to Oklahoma state athletics. And then I get to Stillwater and it's announced that it's $165 million. The, the largest and to this day, the largest donation ever to any university athletic department, one gift from one source. And it was an unforgettable day. And But what the difference between then and now is that that was a gift on the spot, right? And uh, in fact, that money had been transferred to Oklahoma State even before that news conference. OSU already had the money. And, and then OSU became doubly aggressive with the stadium project and that's how the west end zone came to be was that money and so what happened today uh is the introduction of an intent the intent to build all this stuff and to do all this stuff and it's like it's like i just wrote in my column for the tuesday world is this kind of reminds me of like walt disney had the idea for disneyland like years before he had the money to build Disneyland, right? And that's kind of where OSU stands today. They, the hard part starts now is raising the money. And it's so important, I think, uh, because I, I think OSU's kind of been leaning heavily, obviously, on older alumni, right? For mm -hmm. these big signature donations on tennis and 
Obrecht Stadium and other facilities. And so now uh, I think it's really important. And, you know, presumably there will be some of those signature kind of uh, donations where you put your name on the building kind of donation uh, from older alumni. But I think it's critically important now too for Chad Weiberg and his staff and Larry Larry Reese to establish donation relationships with younger alumni and to get the next generation of you know generous alumni. Um, but it, but it was announced or Chad uh, mentioned today that the I guess the estimate on getting all this done is three hundred and twenty five million dollars. That yep. is so. That is so massively fluid uh, and such a guess uh, because you don't know what in the world is going to happen with the economy. You don't know what's going to happen with materials prices. Prices, you know, uh, just in the year, like when they, when Oklahoma State built the south side of the stadium, uh, then they started on the north side only a year later, and and the north side, which is a basically an exact replica of the South side was $30 million more than the South side because of materials, uh, Canadian steel prices. I'll never forget. Mike Holder would talk incessantly about Canadian steel prices and the impact it had on the price of the North side. So you don't know what this is going to end up costing, but it is unbelievably aggressive. And like I said, ambitious, uh, project and, and now Chad Weiberg has a chance to put his fingerprints on Oklahoma State athletics in the same way that Boone Pickens and Mike Holder did. Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree. It's it's aggressive. It's ambitious. I think those are the two words that perfectly kind of encapsulate what this is. Um, because, yeah, the money is not raised yet. Um, Chad Weiberg does have the fundraising background, Bill. Uh, mm. you know, that that That's that always gets brought up in these things. And, and it's worth noting again, you know, I, I don't think it's an issue of raising the money. I don't, I don't think that's where the, the obstacles are going to come. It's how much time is going to pass between all this stuff, you know, and, and he said, there's not a timeline really in place to, to get all, what do we got? Two, four, six, eight. I got 10 bullet points of, of new facilities and, and stuff they're trying to do. Um, you know, so I get like some, some of that stuff is fluid. Um, Obviously, it's not getting done tomorrow. It's it's a years in the making process, and and that's what uh, Chad said about this. Um, so it, it's going to be massively interesting to follow. And like you said, Bill, here's his chance to put his fingerprints on this. And you know, it's important that he, he to to say that you know he started off saying this isn't new to OSU. This is just a continuation of what Boone Pickens helped get in place. Right. I remember uh, when the the original athletic village concept. Uh, after the big donation from Boone, um, there was the belief, beyond belief, there was the expectation that everything would be done by like 2010. And then there was the terrible setback in the, with the stock market crash of 08, when Oklahoma State lost $252 million in one quarter uh, because of the stock market. And so eventually it, it it felt like it was going to take forever and it kind of did uh because you know i would say the the athletic village as we know it now the final piece was old Bright stadium right a couple of years ago so uh and that's like a 15-year gap between the boone donation and the ballpark opening so uh but i think it's uh worth mentioning again that the most underrated aspect of the facilities movement around here uh the most underrated aspect was was that oklahoma state uh, you know before mike holder became the athletic director it, across hall of fame avenue there used to be an entire subdivision of like small old houses right just that whole all that acreage was carpeted with these old small houses oklahoma state bought that acreage either bulldozed or moved those little houses and when oklahoma state acquired all of that acreage that that was the gateway to what we're seeing now and but i'm with you you mentioned uh that you feel like you know uh, a, a new softball ballpark is one of the more I mean, they're all important pieces, but to me, uh, 
getting something built for the for the softball program is critically important. Uh, that's not a developing program over there. That is an established elite program with a substandard place to play. Yeah. And, uh, but John Smith has been the wrestling coach here 30 years, been waiting on, you know, exactly this. And so I'm really happy for John Smith and Kenny Gajewski and all these coaches. And so it, it's just, you know, when Chad stated today that, what was he said, that, that OSU's collection of facilities would be unrivaled in college sports uh, with regard to the way it's concentrated, um, all these facilities are like walking distance from each other. That may be actually true. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, you know, two of these things, uh, two of these things, Bill, are going to be competition venues, you know, a softball stadium and an indoor track facility. Uh, you you got to kind of wonder, I, I guess Chad's answered it, you know, in terms of priority, what's, what's the first thing that gets, gets done. Uh, and, you know, he said it's kind of going to come down to resources and donations. You know, he said that the athletic department wanted to put all this out, kind of let people sh show where the priority is themselves. And, uh, so, so I think that's another interesting fold in, in this whole thing is which one's going to get done first? Which one's going to get the donation first? Well, I don't remember if I was messaging with you or Caden McFarland, but uh, I predicted, oh, it was Caden. But I predict, he said, which one of these do you think gets done first? And I said football because people want to have their name on football, right? They want to have their name associated with football. So that's my guess is is, is football will get done first because someone – it feels like Mike Holder told me that, man, what was the, the – the, to get your name on a on one of these facilities, it was a certain percentage of the total cost of it. I don't remember if it was 25% or 30% or 50 or 15. I don't remember. Should have looked that up. But anyway, it's a lot of money, right? So uh, I just feel like that uh, whatever the, the price tag is on naming rights for that football building, that'll go first. That's my prediction. And, and then, I, but I hope that, um, but softball's a hot sport right now. And so I can see there being a real uh, uh, ability to score that big donation for softball. And for wrestling, I mean, John Smith has a lot of friends out there, and uh, so, but it's going to be really interesting. I mean, Mike Holder is a is a, like I mentioned to Chad Weiber today. Mike Holder is a weapon in fundraising, and he'll be involved. Uh, Coach Holder will continue to be involved, uh, but this is Chad Weiberg's show. This is is this will define. He's 50, so he, he could be AD for 25 more years. But this will be his – this will define the Chad Weiberg years at Oklahoma State. Yeah. No, I 100% I agree. And here's an abstract question for you, Bill. When yeah. we look at this in 10 years, where do you think it's at? Um, honestly, I mean, like I said, everything is so fluid and so unpredictable. Um and, you know, ask yourself this, too. And, you know, a, an OSU person was in, in this room just an hour ago and mentioned this and brought up a great point. But what if electric vehicles become so prevalent that, uh, you know, the oil and gas industry really takes a hit in Oklahoma? Yeah. Think about that. That's it. That's that's a cult, that's an Oklahoma culture changer if that happens. That's an Oklahoma economy changer if that happens. I mean, my guess would be, it, presuming Oklahoma looks um, pretty much like it looks today, ten years from now, I'm saying half of this stuff will be done in ten years. I mean, it took 15 years to get the whole the, the athletic village as we know it today done. It took 15 years, so I'm guessing about 15 more overall. But then half or more of the the bigger ticket. I I shouldn't say bigger ticket because that's like demeaning to some of the others. But uh, I think wrestling, softball, football for sure. Uh, 10 years from now will be done, and uh, but I mean, really, it it's all guesswork. Because like like yeah. Chad said, 
Chet, I thought it was so interesting today. It's like, uh, you know, that Debbie Downer, uh, uh, what is, what is that? Uh, the horn sound, wah, wah. and Chad today said, uh, today is an important, exciting day. <laughs> We're going to have a collection of facilities unraveling called the sports. And like, you're like, everybody's like, yeah, yeah. And then, then he says, this will all be predicated on the, on the gathering <laughs> resources. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. That's the hard part uh, is the raising of the money. I mean, I say hard part. It's it's going to be real time consuming, and they've got to develop relationships they don't currently have with a lot of people, and uh, and the OSU people who already you know are been very generous, pay a lot of money for football tickets, and now uh, you know you're asking a lot of middle class people to step up with donations uh, all over again. So, uh, but this is a new generation of people. I mean, a lot of the people who donated so generously for the first athletic village. Now they're coming of an age where they have the ability to help. So um, it's just, you know, seeing the slideshow or the video and then just sitting there for another 45 minutes watching that slideshow of all those facilities. It's, this is gonna be a mind blowing, uh, this this campus of athletic facilities is going to be mind blowing when it's done. Yeah, I agree. Well, you can uh, you can hear the Bill Haston podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts, and you can hear it and view it on TulsaWorld.com. And this was a we scratched this together uh, today to uh, because this was such a big event for Oklahoma State, and it's like. You know, it'd be a little more fun if you kind of knew if you had a target date or a, or a hard target date that you could say, yeah, by this date, it's opening day for all this stuff. But, uh, but you know, I mean, I guess it's always said if you're not making progress, you're falling behind. You know, there's no in between. Either you're you're moving forward or you're falling behind. So um, as always, you goes into the new Big Twelve with this aggressive plan uh and in the end unless unless these other schools step up with something comparable oklahoma state will be by far the number one school in the new big 12 on facilities yeah i i, I agree all right well i will see you here at the arena in a bit uh dean to watch baylor and oklahoma state and uh our coverage of today's uh, news conference uh, and you get a real detailed look at what all of this does entail. Uh, Dean has put that together and I have got a column on this topic and it'll all be in the Tulsa in the uh, Tuesday Tulsa world. I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys watching and listening. See you soon.